We're back with yet another informative webinar and today we have Priscilla Bilavendran, a passionate test engineer who currently works with Billenium IT Services Malaysia. Priscilla has a decade of experience in quality assurance. She is experienced in different flavors of testing like functional, EDI, ETL, automation and API testing. She's a Postman supernova and speaks at various events regarding APIs and Postman. She's passionate about cloud computing and is an AWS community builder. She's one of the global ambassadors of Women Tech Network and is a certified mentor and helps many test engineers through her mentoring sessions and is also an active community contributor through her blogs, webinars and workshops. Today we have Priscilla here to talk about mocking and monitoring your APIs. Hello everyone. Welcome to this webinar. I'm really happy to see you all to be here. Thank you so much everyone for joining in. I know like everyone has everyone everyone have their priority works and uh, leaving behind everything and uh, you are here to learn something new right so i'll ensure that you're going to have a good learning today okay so without any further delay let's get started with the topic what we have for today okay i hope that you guys should be seeing my screen as well that's great yeah, interesting topic, isn't it? <laughs> Mocking and monitoring of your APIs or for your APIs, you can say. But why do we need to do that? I know we are all doing the API testing for quite a few years already. And uh, there, there might be some enhancements what you have done before, or there are some process which you have changed to have a good API testing uh, automation or manual API testing as such. But when it comes to uh, these two uh, process, I would say mocking and monitoring, they are not given of equal importance. Uh, and sometimes we don't know even the value of these two, like how this is actually related to your API testing process. We have the gap of knowledge over there. Uh, so today I'll just uh, share a few insights about how this mocking process works how this monitoring process works, why we actually have to do this mocking and monitoring for your APIs and API testing, and, and in turn, how this is going to help you for your uh, quality output of your APIs, okay? So uh, let's get started. So this is a bit of introduction about me. Uh, you can call me Priscilla. I love to talk about APIs uh, anytime. If you ask me to do that, I'll do that. I, I really had a very good, uh, a strong relationship with APIs, which is growing every day, uh, which, I, which I usually call it out. Uh, and also, I know uh, there are a lot of testers out there um, who's looking for uh, help uh, to learn APIs and API testing process, um, just that uh, they can actually get into a better job or to survive in their existing job and just to have something or just to add a new skill set to theirs. So I usually do many uh, webinars, workshops, and talks to uh, to give my uh, my my it's it's just uh, my two cents right so whatever i know um, i'm reading a lot i'm studying a lot so based on my own experience i'm just trying to share my knowledge uh, with all of you okay and so today what it's going to be for today uh, we'll have a few topics as we saw before already of course it's going to be the first half is going to be about um, mock servers and the second half is going to be about your uh, monitors and why it's for uh, apis and finally i'll have a demo uh, including both of it yes uh, first thing we should have some basic idea about mock servers why it is in place and how the process is done, how the mocking process is done, okay? And then what are the types of tools available? Because we know there are uh, two types of mocks and what are the tools available in market? Like many open source tools are available. And what are the advantages of using mocks? And then we'll switch on to API monitoring, why we need to do uh, uh, API monitoring as well. And there are a set of tools, uh, different set of tools available for monitoring as such. And, uh, 
and final part uh, we'll have uh, a demo as well so this is this is going to be the crux of today's talk okay yes so let's start uh, with our first interesting topic mock your apis right so how we are going to do that okay and why we have to do that so before uh, start um, the mocking before starting the mocking process you should first know why we are mocking right so this image is nothing but a mocking bird okay if you haven't heard it uh, about before mocking bird is something which is capable of mimicking the sounds which it is receiving like the human sounds and the, the traffic noise it's able to mimic all the noises and uh, they say that the bird is very good at it okay so you will literally relate why i am like quoting out mocking bird right now with mock service there is a relationship okay i'll tell you uh before talking uh, about uh, mocks you should have a basic understanding about two things okay there are something called mock objects which we use in oops okay which is a simulated object which is um literally which is going to behave as a real object uh, when it comes to testing in mock testing we usually mock uh, the objects and a kind of in uh, during your integration testing a simulation is done okay so that you can actually uh, test the even that even with not not at ready components you can actually go ahead for your integration testing so that's the beauty of this uh, mock testing as such and yeah in real time do you think that it is a good habit to mock at others no right but it's not it it's not, it, un, it is unacceptable but when it comes to your abi testing process mocks are going to help you in some, to some extent but before doing that mock process mock process you should actually know why this mocking is done and what is this mocking is all about right in that case first we will see what is a mock server mock server is nothing but a, a simulated uh, a real server like it is simulates the real server how the real server is going to uh, behave right it's going to mirror the same activities but you are the instructor here to this uh, mimic server or the imita imitation server you are going to be the actor or you are going to be the director so you are going to tell them tell the mock server what it has to do and it will explicitly perform the same way what you wanted that to perform so that's the beauty of it of course it's not a real server it's fake okay and uh, it gives a mock response mock response in the sense i mentioned before right you're going to be the director for your mock server so whatever way you're going to configure your mock server that is the response it is going to throw at you at every instance when you're going to make your api call so that's the beauty of this uh, mock server so how does it actually work because we know right now you can uh, just uh, understand uh, just one part of it like why mock server or what is a mock server it is actually a, not a real server it's a server which is going to simulate mimic or mirror the real api behavior or real server behavior of your real server that's it right so how does it actually work the process is very simple okay so first you have to do um, finalize your expected response like what sort of uh, response you wanted to see or what is the response code and message you are expecting so the entire response with the headers and all those things you have to decide it first okay the uh, the typical response which you are expecting you have to first decide on that and then you have to open the mock server in the sense any tool which is capable of uh, setting up a mock server you can just open that tool and you can just configure your mock server and then the next one is like whenever you are going to hit that server using your api calls every time the server is going to respond back with the same response which you configured the server to do that's a beauty that's as simple as that maybe the terminology as it looks very complex okay but i'm just trying to uh, break it into a components which is very simple and easier for you to grasp so just think in in a real time okay uh, you are uh, just kind of uh, making a, a server which is going to react in a way you wanted that to behave okay none of the external components could actually go ahead and influence the server because you're going to be the director here and when it comes to the types of mock servers there is uh, just 
two, which you have to remember. So first one is like public. So when you uh, create your mock server, you're going to make it as a public one, which is accessible to everyone. Of course, that, that's explicit, right? So it is accessible to everyone and there is no authorization required. And when it comes to the private one, there is another type, second type, which we call it as a private one, where only the intended auth, uh, users can uh, log in. And of course, you would need a kind of um, authorization, authentication to go ahead and access those mock servers. Okay. In that case, of course, usually when it comes to the in house, uh, APIs, which is specific to some organizations. And when it comes, I mean, it contains some sensitive data, people will usually go for this uh, private mock service. Okay. And yeah, so now we understood what is a mock server with the types of mock servers. And the next topic would be like, when to actually use mock servers? What is the uh, real business, business or business use case, like where we are going to use mock servers are like, it's very simple. There is a series of APIs which is, has to be which has to be developed, okay? But you know, like uh, even the developers are being busy in different projects. So what they can actually do is like they can actually develop um, a sample response, set it into a mock server, and they can uh, share it to the intended audience, like business testers or other stakeholders, so that even before the development of the real API, we'll get the feel of that. Okay, so this is how it's going to react. So am I able to integrate? this sort of response body, this type and this status code with another API or not. So that gives a clarity. How does that uh, the to be developed API is going to be helpful for you, okay? And some cases it's going to be some underdeveloped APIs or where it is in progress, okay? Where the de de uh, development is in progress. You can actually go ahead, get the response, sample response from your developer and you can set your own mock servers which helps you to proceed with your testing. And in some case, uh, when this server is unstable, but you are um, working on uh, with some, uh, uh, how to say, uh, critical testing and you don't want your test cases to be failed that time, okay? And of course, this is a known issue where your server is unstable. Everyone knows that and they are working on the optimization part. So in that case, you don't want to integrate with your real server every time you can just go ahead for a mock server and you can just continue our testing and the next one is like yeah when you're trying to integrate with uh, multiple uh, api endpoints and, when you, and you're just trying to chain those apis also this mock server urls will be really helpful to some extent and when there are some external dependency uh, uh, say for example you when you're testing you have some third party apis okay which is not available to you all the time Say, uh, for instance, uh, those APIs have some uptime and only in that time you can uh, uh, go ahead and test it. And uh, your thing, of course, your scope is not to test that API, but your data has to go through that API or you have to just uh, check the integration. In this case, um, you don't need to rely every time on the availability of that API. And in some cases, uh, there is actually another scenario where um, it's not about the uptime of that uh, third, third party API. It's about going to be that uh, those third party APIs are having some sensitive data and they don't want to actually expose their API in that case also they'll go ahead and create a mock server and they'll share it with you so that you can actually test in your test environment you can test it using your mock servers and when you go to production it's just replaced with the production service and um, another use case is like uh, where your server is uh, not capable of handling too much loads and say for example you're testing some performance uh, related test cases and in, even in that scenario you don't want to actually go ahead and load your real server right? Because we know that it's working. And uh, intentionally, if you want to avoid that, uh, you can go for uh, mock service. So these are a few uh, important use cases, which you have to be aware of, like when the mock servers are uh, used in real time. And yeah, so this is one of the uh, favorite quote, which I wanted to quote, uh, don't watch the clock do what it does and keep going. <laughs> Why is it so? Because you can't wait for in everything so that you are good to start your API testing, right? There are, there might be a lot of hindrances and challenges which you're going to face. So one such important challenge is what uh, we saw before, like unstable APIs and third party dependencies and so on. So, so most of the challenges can be ruled out using a mock server, okay? 
So now let's see what are the advantages of mock server, how it is going to be helpful, going to be helpful for uh, testers like us. Okay. Uh, it helps you to provide or uh, like once you set up a mock server, uh, it really helps you to analyze the responses and you can just provide the feedbacks to your developer saying like, hey, actually this is the api response i'm expecting i'm expecting a one more tag where like the middle name was missing because this is going to integrate with another third party system or other downstream where the middle name is a mandatory field or the suffix is a mandatory field so these sort of um, early this is what we call it a shift lift right so very early decisions and suggestions which you can give to the entire business and some critical business process flows it's going to be helpful um, and the next one is like uh, wherein you can also start writing your test cases. You can build your own framework. If you have a lot more API endpoints to do that, you can just set your uh, mock servers and you can start building your entire framework so that um, when the um, real uh, server or uh, real uh, API endpoints are ready, you can just uh, replace that URL, uh, mock URL with a real URL and your testing suite is almost ready. So that's uh, one of the greatest advantages. And uh, yeah, even the development. So uh, what we saw before was uh, a similar scenario. When you have some third party dependencies and uh, your development has to continue because of that, you can just make a mock server and you can just uh, make your development continue uh, continuing. And of course, uh, due to some sensitive data information, like uh, some uh, you, some providers will actually just create the mock servers and they'll just uh, share you the mocks and they, they're not okay to provide the uh, production database for testing, right? So in that case, they can go for uh, mock servers. And um, when you have to test uh, the in endpoints individually, like not a chained one, but you, ha you have to intentionally test one endpoint, like whatever we saw before, like when you're trying to load a particular uh, server with some, some sort of uh, um, endpoints and parameters, mocks are really helpful to do an extensive testing over there. And few tools which is available in market, which you all should know is like Postman. Postman is capable of setting up a mock server and you can do it in Spotlight as well via mock, mocky.io and Mocko. So these are just few tools which you can um, use it or try setting up a mock server in a fraction of a second and it's ready for you to use it. So few uh, tips from my side, uh, which, uh, which is going to help to uh, improvise your mocks, uh, mock process, I would say. Uh, every time before setting up your mock, you have your sample response, right? So whether it is a JSON or in any sort of response, just validate the response so that it doesn't have any errors in that, okay? So usually if it is your uh, REST API or, and a JSON format, we have a lot of uh, uh, format validators available online. So just go ahead and validate your uh, JSON format. And tool, of course, based on your need, what sort of need you want, and based on your need, you can select the list of tools, what we saw before and understand the type of project, like what sort of project you are working on, okay? Because that gives you a clarity to select your tool as well. And also make sure that you are setting your, uh, if it is some client related data, make sure that you're, you're setting your APIs, uh, so, sorry, setting your APIs, um, sorry, setting your mock servers as a private one, okay? That's, uh, that's very important, I would say. So when it comes to Postman, uh, it's very simple. Uh, you have an option to create a mock server and in a fraction of minute, you'll really have your um, endpoints ready, okay? And there is another tool called Mocky also. I'll, I'll tell you how to do that. I'll, uh, I'll show you a demo of that as well. Okay, and the second part of this webinar is going to be about monitor, right? So now we understood Mocky is nothing but uh, setting up a server, which is going to react the same way how you want it to be, and you are going to direct that. When it comes to monitor, you need to have a basic idea why we have to monitor the APIs, right? So first we will start off with the basic definition. What is API monitoring? API monitoring is nothing but uh, collection and uh, 
you're just collecting the data, right? So collecting and anal analyzing the data of your APIs. It's nothing but your API. So you're, you're going to do a deeper uh, analysis, which which is which is going to predict you a lot more things. Okay, it, it's capable of uh, predicting a lot more things. And, um, and the next one, which you have to worry about is like, uh, this helps API monitoring, helps in uh, to understand more about your performance and the availability of your APIs. And also to a greater extent, it helps to understand the security of your APIs as well. So it, it's, it's a collective process. Okay, monitoring is a collective process. Of course, there are a lot of factors which we have to worry, but it is a collective process and it has a lot of advantages to do. And it, it doesn't mean that the testers are not supposed to do the API monitoring, okay? Uh, when you have a, 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 a feeling, say like, um, now your APIs are working, okay? But maybe after a defect fix or there is a continuous defect fixes happening, at that time you can just set a monitor for your APIs and it shows a trend of uh, how your APIs have been working, okay? So the next one, which you have to worry about is like, uh, now we understood we need to monitor the APIs, right? So what, what are the metrics? You need to have the basic idea or the basic knowledge of what are the metrics you have to do. And only then you can go ahead and create the proper or collect the proper data, right? So first thing, your overall availability of the API, you need to have that. We all know that 99.99 is the industry standards, but um, I know like uh, most of the newly developed or underdeveloped APIs are not meeting the standards. So that's your responsibility that you have to capture the overall availability of your API and response time, you know, right? Because that's, that's a very uh, uh, simple and uh, one of the um, uh, very basic uh, validation which we perform as part of the API testing process. And what is the request per minute it's happening and the latency. Just a second. And then you have to uh, do your uh, TTFP and TTLB, and then finally your uh, errors per minute. So these are um, a few metrics, okay, which you have to um, consider. Uh, it's it's not just about uh, uh, how to say uh, collecting or understanding these metrics. First, you should have the uh, basic knowledge of this uh, metrics, right? So only then you will be um, able to capture it perfectly, and then you can actually provide your suggestions as well, right? So th this TT uh, FP is nothing but uh, time to first byte and time to last byte. So you should have the uh, both the values and um, all the errors. That's what I'm trying to say. It's not just about errors per minute. You should have an understanding about all your error codes as well. So that's why your um, basic API testing skill set is also playing a very important role. Yes. So this is a very famous code by uh, OWASP. Uh, like without logging and monitoring, breaches cannot be detected. What does it? What does it mean? Yes, great. You are right. Just a second. Sorry, sorry about that. It means like your APIs, right, has to be up and running and you have to monitor the behaviors and you have to log all the uh, details in the sense like how many number of API calls have been sent and what is sent, what is the response returned. So when we capture and log and log and store all the details, it is used in further stages when you have to do some analysis, right? And uh, because why uh, the OWASP is saying that way is like, as per uh, the 2021 data breach investigations report, 20% of the breaches stay undiscovered for months. This helps the hackers to cross layer by layer, right? Because no, if no one is noticing, if no one is monitoring your systems, we, we, we really don't know who is actually entering the system, who is leaving the system, what sort of data is being leaked. We never knew that, right? 
so that's that's the reason we have to know the basic uh, metrics which we have to do and also we should know the importance of monitoring so now let's see why we have to do the api monitoring of course the first one is like you have to understand the trend how the apis are been uh, behaving in the past months or years whatever you wanted to do and then uh, any sort of security leaks or threats have been happening uh, any sensitive data has been leaked or not and if there are some outages uh, you can actually uh, react before and uh, you can make uh, you can act quickly right and also of course if your apis are been performing well and you're going to do a proper monitoring logging and they are secured enough of course you will have a very good uh, customer base as well so what are the tools available when it comes for um, monitoring is like rapid api ready api postman and uh, new relic uh, we have aws cloud watch as well if your applications are running in cloud so few best practices which i wanted to suggest for uh, all of you is like uh, always analyze the trend how your apis have been performing like because based on the frequency which you are going to set the monitors the apis are going to hit every time the api call is going to be hit so just analyze the trend how it's behaving and if there are any deviations try to document the deviations don't assume things okay and if there are any dependencies also like any sort of uh, dependencies that whether you have it uh, along with your uh, monitoring process please never skip those uh, dependencies and when it comes to uh, monitoring just instead of just leaving it as a standalone thing always have to uh, play, always uh, it's better to have that as a part of um, your ci cd pipeline and uh, select your tool wisely uh because some process or some projects doesn't require any advanced metrics right but when in 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 few cases where you need to have a deeper uh, analysis and uh, search in that case you have to go ahead uh, for your uh, deeper uh, very granular level metrics so not all tools have been providing all sort of metrics you know like even in market there are uh, specific tools which is available for uh, detailed api monitoring as well uh, like dynatrace but it depends on you it depends on you whether uh, you have to go for that advanced level of monitoring or whether the basic monitoring is is, is enough for you and uh, alerting because uh, this is uh, one one thing because i just wanted to let you know uh, there are many incidents which happened um, in history wherein like um, we usually alert or we'll give up uh, email there are many scenarios happen wherein like you will provide an invalid email or the employee who left the organization so it's not just about um, providing a email okay when there is a failure system is alerting you so make sure that you are providing a valid email id or a set of dl whom to the intended audience because uh, if i'm just receiving an alert which is totally not needed for me i might i might just ignore it right so the intended audience also plays a very important role here and uh, this is uh, something which uh, which was very uh, interesting so because pe people usually confuse as monitoring versus observability so i just thought of uh, having a very um, basic information here monitoring is nothing but you're going to collect the metrics understand or you're going to uh, analyze the trend and what's happening but you cannot act on that that's what i'm telling us testers we can do that right but observability is nothing but this is a this is a problem but what is the solution providing the solution okay so that is what we call it as observability so it's more of debugging and providing the technical solution so this is a basic uh, differentiation between monitoring and observability so observability monitoring is a base and then you have this observability okay and i think we are here and i'll just uh, start off with my basic demo so two topics which we saw today is like one with mocking mock servers so i'll just show you how to set up a mock server in postman it is very simple so before setting up a mock server uh, 
you should have. So I already have my workspace and my collection. Please set here. I have to just click on this three dots and add example. Example is nothing but the sample response based on here. So sorry, I didn't hit the request here. So what you have to do is like, whatever request, whatever response, which you have to mock it, just make sure that you're getting the response. Okay, so this is my sample response and I wanted to create an example for this, add example. Once I add an example, I should be able to see my response here. So this is my example response. So it should be my example response and that should be a JSON one. And I'm expecting a status code, just a second. These things should be populated. So once I give, uh, click on this request, click on this three dots and just add an example. This sample response, whatever we got here, right? That will be added as in response here and the same response uh, status code will also be here. So it'll automatically be saved. I'm just closing it, okay? And then I'm clicking on this three dots and I'm just going to create, uh, click on this mock collection. Wherein like I'm just going to, created I'm just not changing anything and I'm just creating a mock server. Okay. I I got an URL. So this URL is nothing but which is which has to be replaced instead of the base URL. So I'm just copying it. Uh, come back to this request. So now if you see this request for every hit it will send a different response, okay? But now I'm just going to mock that, making that to give an same response for every count, every hit. So here, this is the base URL. So instead of that, I'm just going to add the mock URL here. It's going to be my mock URL, okay? And I'm just going to hit send. So if you see, this was a sample, uh, response, which we set that as an example. So for every hit, this mock server is going to return the same response. But in real time, if you see the format is same, but if in real time, every time I hit, it's going to be returning me a very set of different set of response. But when I'm just replacing this base URL with a mock server URL, and I'm going to hit send, it'll always respond me with the same response. So what we know, we already saw the use cases where we have to use that. So based on your use cases, you can just create a mock server and you can use it. So here in this, uh, we have a tab called uh, mock servers, wherein that gives you So this tab will give, give you what are the hits at what time it was done and all those details. So every hit to the mock server will also be captured here. Okay, so this is setting up a mock, okay. And there is another tool called uh, Mocky, which is uh, very handy. You can just uh, go ahead doesn't, you, you don't require any login or something. You can just go ahead and create new mock. You can just uh, define what sort of response code you're expecting. What is the content type? All these details are required. So you can just, uh, these are the default ones, but if you, if you want, based on your uh, expected response format, you can just change all those things and you can just give the expected response body. Okay, so say for example, um, 
I would need um, this one. Okay, I'll just copy. This is my sample response. I'm just uh, pasting it, and it has to be in JSON and all those things. So I'm just uh, creating this generate. You have a lot of options here, wherein you can, uh, if you want, you can go ahead and change. I would want in JSON. So I'm just going to create this generate my HTTP response, which gives me a mock URL again. If you see, it was also similar to the one which was generated by the postman. So I'm just copying it, okay? And I'm just creating a new request. I'm just pasting that. And I'm, if I'm going to hit send, it will give me the response of the same uh, design whatever we provided uh, the system to do. So if you see, I can just use this URL. If it is a long response, I can directly go ahead and add my test uh, cases and assertions based on that. So it's one of the uh, important use case, I would say, when it comes to mocking. Like Mocky was very handy and it's simple. You can just uh, edit or uh, do whatever you you wanted to. So it's it's very simple, and you can just uh, manage all the mocks whatever you have created here as well. As of now, they don't have the edit option. You can just uh, share uh, your uh, mock URL, or you can just delete it. So it's just a very handy, simple tool, I would say. Okay. And what about monitors? Of course, Postman has the inbuilt feature to set up the monitors as well. So what I'm going to do is like, that's very simple. Uh, simple monitors are nothing but wherein um, you can try to set up a monitor in which is inside Postman. Okay, and that, send, and that will send you a trigger or alert whenever your collections or your test cases are failing. It, it is running based on your uh, test case or assertions, whatever you're writing inside this. So if I'm writing any of the assertion here, and I'm just going to save it, okay? And how do I set my monitors? I'm just going to click this three dots, monitor collection, and I'm just going to, the name is default, the collection name has been uh, picked up. If you want, you can change. And this was a recent feature which was added to Postman. You can actually do the data-driven testing also for your monitors, and you can, actually set all your frequency when you wanted to run your monitors to run. So every day, what is the frequency? Every day you wanted to run at um, what time you can select and you can provide your email and all those things. And if you have to do any kind of uh, further enhancements also, you can do and configure based on that. So once I create my monitor, my monitor is created and uh, it'll wait for the time but you have the option every time to trigger it manually as well. So right now I'm just triggering it manually. And of course it is failing. It has got some problem. So this is a kind of basic level of monitoring wherein you're setting the monitors for your collections, okay? There is an option uh, where parent postman provides all the integration, I would say, when you come to this home page. You have something called integrations. And if you click on that, you can just browse all the integrations. And here, if you go, you have to just click on this analytics. And this will give you uh, five different types, wherein like you have option to integrate with these external applications and your monitors, whatever running in Postman, all the results will be displayed in their dashboard as well. You're just integrating. It's just a simple uh, way of setting up or integrating with this third party monitoring tools as well. So this, this is how uh, monitors are also going to work. Okay. And I think that's all, it's end of the session. So we, we just um, discussed two important topics today, like mocking, mock servers, how it is going to help or uh, help your API testing process and monitoring, how it is going to uh, help you to enhance or uh, make your API testing simpler uh, in a way and how uh, 
So both 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 the processes, I would say, uh, they are. Uh, helping uh, to stabilize or to create a high quality API. And overall, as an API tester, uh, it's, it's, a, it's an important skill for you to learn about uh, these two important components. And it's not something out of your genre or something. It's, it's good to know uh, these two things and uh, definitely you might need in your API testing journey one day. And if you have any questions, uh, just let me know. I would uh, love to take them. And uh, thank you so much for uh, listening to me uh, patiently. And uh, thank you, QA Touch. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. I really wish uh, happy Testers Day to all of you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Priscilla, for the brilliant session on mocking and monitoring APIs. Thank you for giving your time and sharing your expertise. Also, thank you to all the participants. We hope these webinars provide new ideas, help you stay updated and gain valuable knowledge. Follow us on our social media handles and do stay in touch with the QA Touch community for more events and webinars. Thank you.